Morning, good morning. Blockchain to wake you up, drums to wake you up. It's going to be a fun day. About five years ago, I moved to um, Belgium after having lived in the UK for 15 years. And my then employer asked me to prove my history of work and prove that I had paid social contributions in England. That's how that made me feel, that process of trying to get that done. Hard. About a year later, I tried to send some money over from my English account to my Belgian account, and by the time it hit my Belgian account, I had lost about, I don't know, 7% of my money. That's how that made me feel. Earlier this year, I was in Athens, and I took an Uber. And the guy started complaining about how hard he had to work, because Uber took such big cuts. And to be honest, I felt a bit awkward about using the service Uber. And in situations like these, why I think that blockchains are WTF, wondrous and totally fundamental for the Flemish amongst us, because we like a bit more nuance, don't we? Waarschijnlijk toch fundamenteel. But blockchain is the one technological evolution that's going to have a fundamental impact on our businesses, on our society, and on us as people, the theme of the next two days. What am I going to cover in the next 14 minutes? Three things. What the fuck is blockchain? Very briefly. Two, why is blockchain wondrous and totally fundamental, but in a lowercase, kind of fundamental? And three, why is it really fundamental? Before we kick off one crucial number to remember, I'm not a techie. Yeah? No technical questions later. My job as a consultant is to understand technology for its impact. That's what I do. So what the fuck is blockchain? Blockchain is kind of like a database technology that runs on a decentralized network of computers, and these computers, they verify transactions, they create transactions, and they all store a copy of the database. Doesn't really stick, does it? So I suggest we role play blockchain, all of us, with this, an orange. I'm going to do a transaction with this orange. Peter, you're going to be the receiver. Everybody pay attention. Bam! We've just blockchained. Because everybody's seen this transaction, everybody's registered the, tra the transaction, and if I ask you the question, who now is the orange, everybody will go, Peter. So imagine now that you're part of a decentralized network of computers. Decentralized because you don't know all the computers in the room here. But you've all used a common protocol, your eyes, to register that transaction and you use your brain to store it. And our collective brains now know that this is true, that the orange is now of Peters, and we don't need some kind of bank of oranges or whatever to do this transaction, we've just done it. So in essence, blockchain is gas. It's a lot of food today. I call it consensus, but as a software. Because when software registers that transactions, it does it a whole lot better than us humans do. Because that lady over there, she's a bit pissed off with Peter because he stole her parking spot. And the guy in the back in the white shirt wasn't really paying attention. We're just not very good at this. And blockchain software is. But it's the same thing. It's a common history of the truth. That's blockchain. What makes blockchain so technically special? It's super advanced shizzle. And I can't explain that with an orange in 15 seconds. I'm sorry. But there is one element that's quite special. That's the idea of the chain. The chain, which means that kind of groups of transactions, blocks of transactions, are connected to each other to make an increasingly strong layer of security. It's a bit like this. We all know this game. I'm going to see and I'm taking with me. When the first one starts, I'm going to see and I take with me a bathing suit. And the second one goes, a bathing suit, you get to repeat that, and sunglasses, and so on. We create a history of truth, and if someone messes up, forgets bathing suits, someone around the campfire will go, no, 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 that wasn't true. And the transaction gets denied. That's blockchain. What does that mean for our orange transaction? Say, if I were of bad intent, and I wanted to re-spend that orange and give it to the person next to him, I couldn't, because I'd have to hack into that block where this transaction happened and it's stored. That's really hard, believe me. But I'd also have to go through all the blocks that followed it, that are 
created in the chain after my transaction. That's double hard. And I'd have to do that across a network of different computers. It's really unlikely. Light entertainment to kick off the day? <laughs> no. Well, let's forget about the technology, right? Let's just focus on why I think blockchains are important on level one. What are blockchains actually good for? One thing, transactions. Orange transactions. Or pizza transactions. This was the first ever blockchain transaction. Someone gave someone 10,000 bitcoins for two pizzas, very expensive bit, uh, pizzas, uh, according to the exchange rate of today. But transferring bitcoin is what blockchain kind of did in the beginning. That's why it was invented. Bitcoin was the first application, so to speak, of blockchain. But it's not just money that you can transfer in a secure and a safe way on a blockchain. Blockchains are good for all kinds of transactions, all kinds of assets. What if you could register land ownership on a blockchain? It would be much more secure and safe and cheaper, which is what countries like Georgia and Sweden are experimenting with. So remember, all kinds of transactions. That's what you need to remember. The second thing that are, uh, that's a key element of blockchains is that some of them are programmable. You can add conditions to these uh, transactions. So if this, then transaction. And the guy who kickstarted that was this lovely fellow. Vitalik Buterin, the sexiest of all computer programmers. He was really involved in Bitcoin, but he thought, hey, this is a bit basic, right? We can do better than this. He was 19 at the time, and he wrote a white paper proposing a new, more advanced blockchain called Ethereum, which had the same cryptographic benefits of the old blockchains, but added another layer on it, so you could start building applications on it. I'll give you a few silly examples. You could build decentralized applications that do what the lottery does. If it's 7 o'clock, then generate some random numbers and split a transparent amount of money over the winning accounts immediately according to some predefined rules. That's what you could do. Or this one. When our cars are finally going to be connected properly, we're going to be doing a deal with blockchain-based insurance companies. And the conditions are going to be something like, hey, you know pay, you know drive, we're going to stop your car. These are the things that are going to be happening. And those level of blockchains, they kind of made the whole thing of if this, then that, into if this, then absolutely, certainly that. Immutability. So since then, the use cases have come flying in. Imagine if you could redesign that murky trail of digital ad buying, $8.3 billion wasted every year on click bots, disputable displays, etc. Hey, there's a blockchain concept for that. What if you could cut out all the auditing and the checking and the triple checking of something like a supply chain? Who can take my container at what point? That's what the logistics industry is doing. Blockchain concepts to fix that. What if you made the process of uh, licensing content for music, for instance, much more streamlined? And you could actually prove that a certain track was paid 700 times. Hey, there's a blockchain concept for that, aimed at record companies. And what if you could actually have an immutable history of all your transactions with the government? So you wouldn't have to prove that you have a driving license or that you have paid social securities. So yes, governments around the world are working on all kinds of proof of concepts, also in Belgium, to make this information flow more connected, more transparent, and more secure. Now, this is what's happening right now with companies that, hear, that do transactions and when they hear about blockchain. I want one of those. Financial institutions. Government, record companies, whatever, logistics companies, they, don't, they no longer want an app. They no longer want a chatbot, thank God. They want a blockchain. And they're right, because blockchains or companies that run blockchains or work on blockchains will be able to make all their processes and their transactions cheaper, faster, and less prone to fraud. And for us people, for us customers, we might actually start preferring doing business with a company that has some kind of blockchain connection or runs on blockchain. So that means that transparency, real transparency and accountability might actually become a USP for companies or governments. Imagine that. However, I don't think, or I think that this is really fundamental, but only on a level one. 
lowercase, wondrous and totally fundamental small letters. Because it's still about optimization and it's still about streamlining an existing value flow. And there's a whole lot more to blockchain. I think there is a WTF level in capital letters. Really wondrous and totally fundamental. This could be like a typical value flow of a transaction in the current world, say for an energy consumption. Lots of parties involved, lots of parties that need to get paid. I'm slightly exaggerating, but this is what this flow looks like in Brooklyn. Peer-to-peer, -peer, direct. In Brooklyn, there's a street, and there's a bunch of neighbors on one side of the street, they have solar panels, and they sell their energy directly to people on the other side of the street without solar panels, directly without the need of a, a trusted intermediary, without the need of a central authority. That's new. Imagine if you could buy a song or stream a song from a blockchain-based music application. And that song has a contract. And in that contract, it's written that your euro that you spent is divvied up in a certain way. 5% to the guitar player, 1% to the drummer. He always gets less. Sorry, guys. Uh, and not 30% to Apple. And if you spend your euro and buy the song or stream it or whatever, your money gets sent immediately. Because the song has an account on a blockchain and it runs its own business. It sets its own conditions and it collects its own fees. Sabam, PRSs of this world, you're going to be obsolete. And that's new, that's different. It's a more direct way of interacting between a producer and a consumer. Seven, eight years ago, I was naive back then. I made grand statements like this. I said the social web is going to do what the printing press did. It's going to democratize information and content creation. And to a certain extent, that was true. We got Wikipedia, etc. Blockchain is going to build on that. Blockchain has the potential to democratize value exchange. And that's a whole different ballgame. We're going to go to an internet of value. And that's because some of these blockchains, they are open. They are permissionless which means that anyone can start and build an application on it under their own terms. Anyone can start trading between two parties, whatever they are, under their own terms. Anyone can set up an account, which is effectively a bank account. How many unbanked people are there in the world? Anyone can send value from one party to another without central control. And that's new, because normally we trust or we put a lot of trust in central authorities. We put a lot of trust in banks to keep our money. That went well. We put a lot of trust in governments to create the rules. We put a lot of trust in Ubers and Facebooks, etc., etc. Now, what if that trust is no longer necessary? Because that's baked into blockchain. I'm going to fuck with your mind on one more level. What if you could create your own token, your own currency, and you could create your own marketplace? where this token gets used, this currency gets used, and the more successful your marketplace becomes, your little niche economy, the more valuable that token is. That's strange, huh? Let's go back to our cab driver in Athens, our Uber driver. What if he could keep the whole fee that you paid him for the ride? Hey, there's a blockchain app for that. It's called Swarm City. And the reason why Swarm City can afford not to charge fees on that transaction is because they've created a niche token, a taxi token. And the taxi drivers get paid in this token, or will be. This is launching soon. And what happens is the more people start using the service, the more valuable the token becomes. The more valuable it becomes, it means that all the people that own these tokens, the founders, they don't own shares, they own tokens, but also investors, taxi drivers, taxi users, they become stakeholders. And all of them will benefit from a very good marketplace. Blockchain is creating new business models that are based around common incentive models and not around shareholder take it all models. That's new. Platforms like Swamp City, they're going to be enabling real peer to peer economy, real sharing economy, because that's the only, the only the first use case they're working on. The network always wins. Hell yeah, in blockchain land, it really, really does. So for the first time, there's this thing called blockchain that sits on the overlap between technology, profit, entrepreneurship, 
and, profit, uh, and, and prosperity and ethics, and that's new. And if that's not WTF, wondrous and totally fundamental, if that's not um, bound to have an impact on business and society, then I don't know. Finish off four takeaways. One, if you're in, the, in a business that does transactions of any value, and those transactions require immutability or um, um, some kind of conditional programming of some kind of mutual trust, blockchain might be able to help you on level one. Takeaway two, if you're a business that sits here, if you're one of a middleman, you should really assess how you're going to be disrupted. You should really assess what your current added value is to this value flow because the role of middlemen will be drastically changed by blockchain. Takeaway three, start now. Read, watch, do workshops, buy a coin even. Just to start, it's not an, uh, it's not an investment advice. Um, get confused, you have to. Get ripped off, it doesn't matter. But start because this decentralized world is different, and all of us from all fields of uh, industries need to feel it. And I'm going to be helping you with it. I'm going to give a present. I'm writing a book on this topic. Good luck to me. It's going to be out in autumn. And the first 250 people that can prove to me that they've bought the book, I'm going to give them a discount. Not in euros, but in cryptocurrencies. I'm going to send you some Ether or some Bitcoin or whatever. If you're interested, sign up here. Final takeaway, I urge you to look at all the fantastic wisdom that's going to be shared here today through the lens of decentralization. Blockchains are WTF, wondrous and totally fundamental. But it's not going to be blockchains that are going to have an impact on business and society. It's not going to be blockchain that's going to change the world. It's what we decide to do with it. Thank you very much.